Today marked the seventh meeting I've had with President Karzai in the first four and a half months of the year. As the Afghanistan president visits the United States, the U.S.'s special representative for Afghanistan, Richard Holbrook, says U.S. involvement there is going according to plan, boosting security, strategizing effective governance, improving agriculture and civilian relations, and keeping his relationship with Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai solid. And on that basis, we work with him and his government, and we welcome him to Washington. My personal relationships with them are cordial and respectful and friendly. Washington and Karzai had been at odds over recent elections and the handling of military strategy in the South Asian country. Civilian casualties and rumors of voter corruption leading the disagreements. Karzai kicked back, blaming the U.S. for interference in elections and at one time threatened to join the Taliban. They shake hands, they smile, they assure everybody that progress is being made and uh, nothing significant happens. But it's comments like Karzai's and the ongoing death toll that are making Americans change the way they feel about the war in Afghanistan. According to a Washington Post ABC News poll, only 44 percent of Americans believe that the Afghan war is worth its costs, while 52 percent disagree. The new numbers indicate the end to a slight bump in support for the war just after President Obama announced his new surge strategy. Support for the war is weakest among Democrats, two-thirds of whom agree the Afghan war is not worth it. A majority of independents, 56 percent, also feel the war isn't worth fighting. 69 percent of Republicans surveyed believe the war is worth its costs. They just can't seem to refocus, especially given everybody's economic worries nowadays, uh, which clearly takes precedence over a war which is out of sight, but out of mind for most people, unless you got a son or a daughter or a husband or a wife fighting over there. The U.S. military is currently gearing up for the surge strategy that adds 30,000 extra troops into Afghanistan to try to defeat Taliban and allow U.S. forces to start coming home next year. 115 U.S. troops have been killed so far this year. Washington division over President Karzai is well documented. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is considered to be one of his biggest allies, while Vice President Joe Biden and National Security Advisor James L. Jones are considered to be his harshest critics. Colin Campbell, Washington.